This video features the Apple Studio Display. No, not the new one with the webcam and the fancy $1,500 price tag, but the classic one from the early 2000s. First, we'll go over a little bit of history on the Apple Studio Displays. As you all know, there is now also an Apple Studio Display that was introduced not too long ago. It features a webcam, an actual SOC inside, a 5K or 6K, whatever it is, display. And it's all very nice, certainly is, but the name Studio Display has been around for over 20 years. In fact, the first actual LCD studio display that Apple made was back in the late 1990s. I think they took a display from a power book, put some bezels around it, and called it a studio display. Most of the ones that came after it were CRT versions, also in various uh, nice little colors. After Steve Jobs got back and turned Apple from a beige company into a colorful company. And then came along these models that you see right here on your screen. This is the very last of the 4x3 aspect ratio studio displays. After this, they were called cinema displays. The cinema HD display was the very first uh, that came after this to feature a very nice uh, wide and high resolution uh, display. And after that, they redesigned it to better pair with the Power Mac G5 and the Mac Pro and the whole new uh, industrial design language. And then they came with the regular uh, cinema displays in 20 inch, 23 inch and 30 inch uh, respectively. This particular version that you see right here, uh, this overall design with the classic uh, pinstriping and the graphite Apple logo, uh, nice little uh, brightness button there. Uh, this variant came in 15 inches and 17 inches in size with resolutions up to 1024 by 768 on the 15 inch version. And this is the larger 17 inch version that comes with a 1280 by 1024 resolution. On the back it features two USB 1.1 ports and the cable that comes out the back is an ADC connector or the Apple Display Connector. This carries power, USB and a digital video signal better known as DVI. And uh, as you've probably noticed we're connecting a almost 20 year old display. In fact this is the model that was discontinued in 2004 and came out in 2002 this particular one is probably 20 years old at this point, and it is running uh, or showing macOS Ventura. You might wonder, well, the Apple Display Connector probably doesn't exist anymore, and you're absolutely right. It was killed off um, halfway through the uh, Power Mac G5 uh, lifespan uh, in favor of a regular DVI connector. Apple Display started using DVI and just uh, having some extra cables attached to it rather than just one thick cable with all the protocols inside they decided to split it up with a MagSafe connector for charging your Mac uh, on the later versions and on the earlier versions you had a FireWire and USB uh, and DVI cable coming off of the same display. This one is just one thick cable ADC carries power uh, that was usually uh, coming from the motherboard We'll uh, take a look at the hardware side of things in a little bit. And uh, yeah, just one cable to power the monitor and then power a USB hub. That was perfectly adequate back in the days. And if you take a look at macOS Ventura, it is in fact detecting our display as an Apple Studio display. We have a couple of different resolutions we can choose from. However, in macOS Ventura, there is no brightness control for this display because I believe that is actually reliant on the uh, ADC connector. I don't have Snow Leopard on this particular machine so I can't verify for sure. And as you can see here our Mac, uh, max resolution is 1280 by 1024. What I can say about the overall output of this display is that it is very nice, it is very clear. Brightness is not, a, not amazing but then again this is the era of CCFL backlights and it, this one is 20 years old. I don't know how many hours this has on it and that's all a bit of a wash. This display was purchased um, maybe 13, 14 years ago, so at this point, well, not quite that long, about 8, 9, or 10 years ago, rather. My memory's a bit fuzzy sometimes, but that's the way things are. Here we can see our display is an Apple Studio display, 17 inch, 1280 by 1024. Still good to see that macOS Ventura can still read this old display even on this 2008 Mac Pro running Ventura. Alright, 
So let's take a better look at the hardware side of things, and we'll also take a look at the ADC connector and all of its goodness. All right, and here we are at the back of a Power Macintosh G4 MDD. This is the series that really uh, got, gotten very dusty. Okay, well, anyway, this is the series that really utilized the ADC connector. This was the height of its days. And what it looks like on the display side is like this. It is very much like DVI. In fact, here we have them side by side. You can see that the overall pin profile is very similar like the little edge here, like the flat bit with the four pins on the left hand side, they're identical. This just has some extra pins for USB and for power. It's a very thick cable as you can see. But overall it is very much clear that this is family of the DVI connector. On the side of the Mac we can see a DVI connector here and an ADC connector here. They look very similar again because they are. However, what you probably can't see, I'll give it a little bit of a zoom here, is you have some locking connectors here on the side. As you notice, DVI is a screw type connector where you just screw on your uh, cable so it can get uh, accidentally unplugged. The AC connector has an actual uh, mechanism that clips the cable in place. You can also see that on the connector here that there are these tabs on the side they interlock with that. You can just put it in like so. And it is now firmly connected. You can't just pull it off as you can see. You have to push the buttons on the side. You can hear a click. And then you can release the cable from your Mac. One of the reasons we were able to use a uh, old display like this with a, a connector that no longer exists uh, is actually because we have a DVI cable here and a USB cable. Now what they lead up to is a little bit, a little something like this here. This is the Apple DVI to ADC adapter. Apple sold this in a period where ADC was going out of style, but they didn't want to uh, dupe all of the various people that bought expensive studio displays with an ADC connector. So you could still use them with your new Power Mac G5 or Mac Pro uh, or MacBook Pro because they all had DVI connectors on them. You could even connect uh, using this adapter to your PowerBook. Although looking this thing around in your backpack with your PowerBook was probably a bit of a stretch because frankly this is uh, quite a heavy brick. Most of this isn't actually uh, logic in there, it is a power supply. The studio display that you see on the right there uh, has a continuous power rating of 40 watts. So this thing has to be capable of powering those displays. The copyright date in this particular adapter is 2002. I don't know if you can read that. I'll just hold it up there so you can see. Uh, assemble in Taiwan. 1.5 amps. It doesn't say how many volts it is, but it just correct directly uh, connects to main, so I'm just going to assume that uh, this is a pretty beefy unit. And of course, typical Apple plastic of the time, it is scratched to hell. But again, on the back side we have an ADC connector, power input on the other side, and what comes out of it is a USB plug that's a bit mangled, but then again this thing was very cheap. Uh, not from the factory, but from where I got it. And the DVI connectors held together by tape, which is not a problem to me. But yeah, this allows us to connect it to a very modern Mac indeed. Or even to a PC. I connect it to a Windows computer and it also works fine on there. Albeit no brightness control. So let's connect it up to the Power Mac G4 for the next bit. So we can experience the full ADC goodness. And uh, go from there. Something I just forgot to mention is where does the ADC connector draw power from if you don't have an external power supply? Well, it draws the power from the power supply of your G4 Mac or G5 and it's actually transferred to the AGP slot. Your video card has the ADC connector on it and as you can see down there, there's a little bit of a notch on the end of the AGP slot there. That is because that's where the power comes from. 
all the power that's required for an ADC display is coming from those pins there, from that little connector on the edge. This also means that if you're using a flashed PC graphics card on your G4 Power Mac, you can't use an ADC display. Well, it's a bit of a given because ADC won't fit on there, but uh, yeah, there's a bit of a moot point. But uh, yeah, if you have DVI, you can of course use the ADC to DVI connector and then use your PC graphics card with a Mac ROM on it in your Power Mac G4. And now for the real ADC showing. We have one cable from the display to the Mac that connects our USB peripherals and our display. And the only other two cables I had to connect were an Ethernet cable and, of course, power to the Mac. Now, let's turn the Mac on, shall we? By using the display. This is one of the upsides of ADC. It can also power on your Mac through your display. To reiterate, this is a Power Mac G4 mirror drive doors. This is an education model from 2003. It has a single 1.25 GHz G4 CPU, 2 gigs of RAM, and I believe 120 gig SSD. I changed the fans in the power supply and the main chassis fan uh, to regular PC fans using uh, Noctua uh, OmniJoin adapters. What they basically do is you have to cut off the non-standard connector and use those little scotch blocks with some fluid in them to uh, reconnect them and line them up with an actual PC connector. So you can use PC fans. This machine is now very quiet, and since we've used Noctua fans, it's also pretty cool. All right, now we're booting into OS 10. I believe this is OS 10 Panther. We have a couple of different versions on here, so we'll go with Panther for now. This is the multi-boot Mac of choice because it can run OS 9, the very first OS 10 versions, up to uh, OS 10 Leopard. Alright, so if we go to the display settings here, the display icon in fact, let's zoom in a little bit, the display icon is an actual studio display, so that's fun. And here we have brightness control over the display that was absent in Mac OS Ventura and also in Windows by the way. The camera will uh, sort of uh, compensate for the brightness, so you can't really see how much it shifts in real life. I can tell you that the brightest settings actually decently bright for indoor use. You can also see it if I go from the lowest to the highest. The camera really tries to compensate. If you now have an epileptic seizure, I apologize, of course. Uh, but I think we can leave it about there. That's fine. Color reproduction on this display is decent. And, uh, yeah. If we use the brightness setting on the display itself, let's press it and hold it. Or does it just bring up the display settings? Yep, that's what it does. Alright, so you can press it again. It will close the system preferences. And if you press it again, it will open up System Preferences, go straight to Display, and then you can adjust your brightness there. It's a nice little shortcut. Also, if you want to shut down your Mac, you can just use your display. One press will make it go into Standby. You can see, because it is starting to breathe, that's a typical Standby. which is very useful indeed. You can just walk up to your Mac, do your stuff, press your button once, wait for a few seconds, and we'll go straight into standby. Of course, if it feels like it. Actually, in fact, the USB hasn't parked back on, and it is now frozen. Yay, video. But I think that is more than enough uh, for this video. Oh, there it goes. It's just a little bit slow. No, it actually has a hard drive in there, that's why I was, was being sluggish. But yeah, USB does not actually power on again. Uh, I think that's a bug, but 
However, anyway. So I think that concludes our little video on the 17-inch Apple Studio display, the ADC connector, and its various use cases, and how it works. Hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one.